I kind of want to try recording a bit of the Ballots and Brews event before I get sick and I'm not able to. And also, I'm running out of time because I kind of procrastinated playing this event for some reason. Let's use our old mod stack team. We're going back. Thank goodness you were able to come as soon as we contacted you. Who knows how we would have coped with all these commissions otherwise. I was nothing. The last couple of days have been pretty busy, but it was all super easy stuff, like delivering and escorting goods. Yep. Being the seasoned adventurers that you are, it's true that you are suited to work of a much higher caliber than your recent assignments. Nah. However, this situation is unavoidable in Mondstadt at this time of year. Huh? Why is that? Because it's harvest season. That's right. This is the ideal season for harvesting crops and fruits. And for the wine capital of Tavat, it's also the all-important winemaking season. Ah, well no wonder we keep hearing people talking about wine these days. <laughs> huh? What do you mean? Seriously? What? Yes, I swear I'm not making this up. The acting grandmaster wants everyone to gather at headquarters in the main hall. Hurry! We need to leave right now or we'll be late. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, why do those two oh. knights look Hi, so Kaya. Hi. <laughs> He's going to sneak up on Paimon. Well, hello there. If it isn't the Traveler and Paimon, what a rare pleasure. Kaya, just the person we need. Um, why is everyone running off to the Knights of Favonius headquarters all of a sudden? Uh, are we required to go to? <laughs> Don't worry. This isn't one of those occasions where you need to come to everyone's rescue. All that's happened is that the Knights of Favonius have just received a letter from the Grand Master. Acting Grand Master Jean will be convening a meeting in the main hall shortly to go through it. Okay. <sighs> well, that's a relief. Wait, hold on a second. What did you say again? Yeah, I, 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 I did not pay attention. A letter from the Grand Ma Oh, the Grand Master. Isn't that Varka? The leader of that legendary expedition? Big buff Varka. What did Varka say in the letter? How's the expedition going? When are they getting back? Oh. So interested in our Grand Master all of a sudden? Never knew you were such a gossip. <laughs> it's only normal, isn't it? That you'd be curious too if there was someone you'd heard loads about but never met. True. Even though <clears throat> Gene says he's a living legend. Oh, pretty hard not to get hyped up after hearing that. <clears throat> a certain elf mom. <clears throat> <laughs> the acting Grand Master is very gracious in her appraisal. Varka brought quite a bit of trouble to those around him on the road to becoming a legend. I'll have to tell you about it sometime. Anyway, since this has piqued your interest, why don't you join me at headquarters? And we'll see what the letter says. Okay. We do miss our honorary night after all. Aw. It's been quite a long time since your last visit. Aw. I don't know what them devs did when making that Mondstadt crockpot, but this shit feels like home to me, just being back and having an event here. Hmm. It looks like just about everyone's here. Hey there, cutie. Hi, Lisa. Uh, I didn't know you two would be coming. So you heard about the letter? Yep. Yep, we ran into Kaya near the Adventurers Guild. Oh, wow. Paimon's never seen so many people in the main hall at once before. Yeah, I've never seen this many nice of Avonius either. <laughs> Paimon's getting kind of nervous now. <laughs> Don't get too carried away, all right? If I know the Grand Master, the fact that he has the time to be writing letters means it's probably nothing serious. <laughs> True. It certainly won't be bad news. It would be bad news if he, like, sent someone back, like, bloody and dying, trying to scream for help. Kaya's exaggerating a little, but otherwise I agree. Uh, After all, Mika's not the kind of person who'd be able to keep Mika? it hidden if something were the matter. The truth would be written all over his face. Who's Mika? Over there, look. The kid standing next to Jean oh. on the staircase? <laughs> you got that chocobo ass haircut. He used to be a land surveyor in Eula's team. He's very talented in what he does, and a very reliable person. When the expedition team set out, the Grand Master appointed him to be the core member of the frontline team. He's the one that brought back the letter. Please, may I have your attention, everyone? Now that we're all here, let's begin reading out the letter from the Grand Master. <clears throat> Mika, please, go ahead. Y Yes, Master Jean. Uh, right. 
Hello, everybody. I am Mika, surveyor of the Reconnaissance Company. Uh, recently, I have been taking part in an assignment with the expedition team. I will now be reading Grandmaster Varka's letter aloud for you all. <clears throat> to the Knights of Favonius. Greetings, everyone. This is Varka. The first thing I want to say to you all is please put your minds at ease. The expedition is safe and all of its members are accounted for. That's good. Oh, that's fantastic news. That's great. <sighs> My palms are sweating. <sighs> um, may I continue? Even she took a sigh of relief. Go ahead, Mika. All right. Now that your fears are allayed, I trust you'll be ready to listen to the rest of my letter. Oh no, he knew. I'm writing to you from the northernmost reaches of Tevat by the light of a stove. The expedition forces are stationed here while we restock. I once told you that the purpose of this expedition was related to a dangerous secret from days long past. Huh? I am still unable to disclose more than this, but suffice to say that you needn't worry about how our mission is progressing. So he's looking for something related to a dangerous secret. In the past couple of months, we received an unexpected visitor. The Fatui Harbinger known as... Whoa! The Captain. What? I am fully aware of the Fatui's outrageous actions in Mondstadt in recent history. Nevertheless... The captain was not hostile towards us on this occasion. Uh-huh. Open parenthesis. I rather suspect that's because this time, Snezhnaya and we are in the same boat. Close parenthesis. <laughs> the man hides everything under the mask he wears, so no one can know his past or his origins. However, one thing is for sure. He is as hard as iron for having the courage to challenge gods as an ordinary mortal. Oh. I don't doubt that he could even take out a ruin guard by stabbing it in its big, glowing eye with one of Klee's crayons. <laughs> Open parenthesis. Don't get any ideas. Close parenthesis. <laughs> don't get any ideas. Who are you speaking to with that, huh? Our scouts have confirmed that the captain received orders to head for Natlon three days ago. We'll be able to sleep much better now that we don't need to worry about him anymore. Oh, okay. I will admit Wait. that some of his actions have helped us, but even then, he owed us at least that much. So he'll be in Natlan by the time we get there. This year's Vineleza Fest must be kicking off in Mondstadt any day now. What a great pity that this year, once again, we will be unable to spend the festival together. Everyone here is always thinking back fondly upon the fine wines of Mondstadt, as well as the happy times we have spent with each and every one of you. I wonder how long it's been since they've came back to Mondstadt. I hope that you and all the citizens of Mondstadt enjoy the festival to the fullest. Have a few drinks on our behalf. The Dawn Winery's limited edition Vine Laser Fest seasonal uh -oh. special will do nicely. And rest in peace, D. Luke. May Lord Barbados bless Mondstadt, and may the wind carry our sentiments back to your side. Varka. P.S. If you're wondering who's tougher between me and the captain, well, I'm the Grand Master. Uh. There are ten captains in the Knights of Favonius, but only one Grand Master. Ah, ha, 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 ha. His uh. left, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> the letter ends here. Thank you, everyone, for your attention. <laughs> he said his left, not mine. Thank you, Mika. Master Jean, um... I just noticed that there's something else written on the back of the last page. Oh, he has a crowd vision. I just saw it on his hand. <clears throat> PPS. PPS. I ran <laughs> out of paper, so I'll add this here. 
Lisa, pee -pee. the following is a message for you. Uh, oh, uh, this part seems to be from the Grand Master to Miss Lisa. Okay. Oh, for me? Uh, seeing that it's a special message, Lisa, we'll discuss this in private. Everyone, as the Grand Master mentioned in his letter, the Vine Lisa Fest is in just a few days. And how fortunate we are at this time to receive word that all is well with the expedition. This calls for a big celebration. Though they are unable to return to Mondstadt and spend the festival with us, the Vine Lisa Fest will nonetheless be a major event that all of Mondstadt is looking forward to. I hope that everyone will guard your stations and perform your duties, both for our far-flung colleagues involved in the expedition and also for the hardworking people of Mondstadt. And of course, during your time off, I hope you will be able to rest, relax, and enjoy this long-awaited festival. Did Paimon hear that right? They ran into the Fatui's captain? I'm gonna give a damn about that one wine. Hey cuties, how about we go and chat with Jean? You didn't get a chance to say a proper hello with so many people here. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> hi there. Um, you must be looking for Captain Kaya? Please, don't mind me. Actually, I was looking for you. Oh, uh, wait, but what? Oh, jeez, Captain Kaya, wh what should I say? Aww. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mika. How have you not changed one bit after being on the front line this long? You were just asking me about the Storm Terror incident, weren't you? Well, allow me to introduce you to the legendary Honorary Knight. Hi. Hi there. You guys are so strong. I'm... I'm in awe. Um, I have to go and report in with Captain Eula now. Please excuse me. What? <laughs> okay. All right. Bye. <laughs> Don't take it the wrong way. The way he sees it, every pair of eyes in Mondstadt is focused squarely on you. Give it some time, and this will all sort itself out. Next time you see him, I'm sure he'll get along just fine. I guess he just has a bit of social anxiety. What do you think? Glad you tagged along this time? Yeah. A little birdie told me that you'll be staying in Mondstadt for the Vine Lisa Fest. Hope you enjoy yourselves. Who told you that, huh? Was it Tammy's birds? Traveler, Paimon, it's been a long time. Apologies, I didn't get the chance to talk with you during the meeting just now. If you don't have any plans in the immediate future, why not stay in Mondstadt for a while? We'll be celebrating the Vine Lisa Fest very soon. Sure. Don't be deceived. Jean may appear very composed, but she's been missing you both terribly recently. Uh-huh. <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you to catch up. I'm going to read my letter. Um, Master Jean, neither of us really knows anything about this Vine Lisa Fest. Could you tell us more about it? The Vine Lisa Fest is an ancient Mondstadt festival, Wine just Lisa like Fest. Lady Harpastum and Windbloom. In addition, it's the most important part of the fall. Okay. Each fall, the west wind blows in Mondstadt. Legend has it that the wonderful scent of Mondstadt's winemaking during the harvest season entices even the Animo Archon into attendance, being the great wine lover that he is. No matter where he is, he will transform into a soft breeze and return to his homeland. <sighs> yeah, that sounds like the Animo Archon, all right. <laughs> <laughs> he made this shit just to get wine, huh? For this reason, Mondstatters call the western wind the returning wind, the Vine Lisa Fest originally began as a celebration to welcome Lord Barbados on his return. In the past, every household would brew fresh wine around this time of year and keep it sealed at least until wind coming day during the following year's Vine Lisa Fest. Uncasking the sealed wine is a symbolic way of inviting the Animo Archon to share a drink. Uh Legend holds that if the Animo Archon is satisfied with the taste of the wine, he will summon a gentle breeze to richly bless the people. <laughs> or he'll summon uh, his inner organs out onto the kitchen floor. Knowing him, it was probably blessing them with more good wine the next year. Uh-huh. That's a good question. Huh. But there's really no way of knowing. These are very old stories. Many of the details have been lost to time. Yep. Some stories change completely as they get passed down. Hence why these days, monsters will get into endless arguments.
difference over what kind of flower a wind bloom is. True. It's sweet flowers, by the way. All part of how cultural heritage is created. Indeed. But for the time being, at least, the tradition of paying tribute to the animal archon on Windcoming Day is still alive and well. And the Vine Lesa Fest remains a time for Mondstatters to share the joy of the harvest with one another as they partake of fine wines. This is a time of the year when many Mondstatters living away from Mondstadt return to their hometown. For those unable to return, huh. Vine Lesa Fest is the period when they miss their family and friends most keenly. Oh, what a coincidence that I came back. For this year, we've joined forces with the Church of Favonius and the Adventurers Guild to host a celebration on the banks of Cider Lake, just outside of Springvale. There will also be a traditional wine market during the festival period. Wine market? Oh, she heard that and she was like, ooh, Paimon, you can't even drink legally. Well... Originally, it was simply a place where winemakers and farmers would come to trade in raw ingredients for winemaking. These days, it is a much grander affair. Not only will you find a range of choice wines, but seasonal fruit beverages and food items for everyone to enjoy too. A lot of people also sell secondhand goods and handicrafts at the market. The Knights of Favonius plan to use this as an opportunity to do some fundraising for needy children and elderly people in the city. Nice. If you have the time, I encourage you to take a look around. I hope you'll find it a worthwhile experience. Um, now, Lisa, what was the Grand Master's message to you about? True. I was just about to bring that up. The Grand Master says he wants me to handle something for him. Something to do with Razor's past. Razor's past? Razor told us that he was raised by a pack of wolves in Wolvingham. He never knew his parents. In his own words, the wolf pack is his lupica, which means family. Well, he is human, so he might as well have a human side to him. Yes, that was as much as I knew as well. But in his letter, the Grand Master says that in the cabinet above the third bookshelf, to the right of the grandfather clock in Jean's office, there's a wooden oh. box containing some items that Razor's parents left for him. He says it's time to give the box to Razor. Does this mean the Grand Master knew Razor's parents? Hmm. Seems like it. It would seem so. The Grand Master didn't simply run into Razor one day in Wolvendom and teach him how to use a sword. No. The connection between them goes back much further. This makes sense. Well, come on! Let's go find Razor! He'll be pretty excited to find out something about his true parents! Hmm. Hmm. Something worrying you, Lisa? Oh, cutie. Nothing escapes your eyes, does it? Uh-huh. For the child who never met their biological parents, this kind of conversation is always a difficult one. Even for the most well-adjusted. By contrast, Razor grew up in Wolvendom and has had very limited contact with human society. Who knows whether he's ready for this or not? I'm sure the Grand Master will have given due consideration to Razor's circumstances. Perhaps he felt that now would be the most appropriate time. Maybe. Hmm, that's a good point. Okay, cuties, can I leave you to break the news to Razor? Us? Why it gotta be me? He thinks of me as his teacher, so he might not open up to me if he gets upset. Oh. But you are his trusted friends. I think it makes more sense for him to hear about this from you. Okay, well. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> sweetie? <laughs> Try to be as encouraging as you can. Someone his age needs all the love and support they can get. Okay. It was good of Mika to bring the letter back all this way. Knowing that everyone is safe and sound is the best encouragement I could ask for. Still, I hadn't counted on the captain making an appearance. True. The Grand Master has a rather uh, uh, unconventional way of describing things. But even then, I've never heard him give such high recognition to anyone before. If you ever encounter the captain on your own journey, be on your guard. He is not someone to be underestimated. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> if we end up running into him, I'm sure that'll be a very fun time. Maybe we might be prepared by that time, because right now we're going to have to face against two Fatui Harbingers, one being the second strongest. Maybe we'll be fine by then. About Mika. Mika tells me that rather than rejoining the expedition party, Grandmaster told him to return to his post in Eula's reconnaissance company after delivering the letter. Land surveyors are usually situated in the vanguard of an army on the move and are tasked with exploring previously uncharted territory. 
Huh. It looks like the expedition must have entered into a much less intense phase. Have you had the chance to speak with Mika yet? When he's with people he hasn't met before, he tenses up and stands <laughs> bolt upright. <laughs> yeah. I really wish he had a little more self-confidence. Eh, it could be hard, but that's alright. So, about the wine laser fest. There is still some preparation to do, but don't worry. Everything's on track. Actually, while we're on the topic, I have an assignment I'd like to give you. Namely, enjoy the festival to the fullest. Any objections? No. As his teacher... I have a duty to give him the best education and guidance that I can. I'll make sure I'm prepared by the time you get back. Go on now, cuties. I'll leave Razor in your hands. That was nice seeing all of them again. That was real nice. I wonder when we'll see Amber. Usually around Wolvendom, right? Uh, how do you think he'll react after hearing about this? Uh, we'll probably have an existential crisis that'll either destroy his brain forever or he'll somehow find a way to move past it and be happier. It's a hunting trap. Uh-oh. Hmm. It looks like the ones that the hunters from Springvale use. Don't step on it. Oh, Razor set them. Huh? What is it? There are traces of electro energy near the trap. Electro energy? Hmm. Paimon wonders if it could be Razor. But Paimon thought he was pretty good at avoiding the hunters. What if he said it himself? Well, anyway... Let's follow the traces of Electro and see where they lead. Remember during Razor's mission where they gave us traps and then they never gave them to us ever again? I kind of wish I kept the ones that I didn't use because I don't think we'll ever be able to use them again. Oh, hi, Traveler. Back in Mondstadt for the Vine Lessa Fest, huh? Well, watch out for boars if you're out exploring the open country. All right. This guy sounds very familiar. Hey! Razor? Wait, who's that again? Oh! You mean the guy who goes hunting with Draft? I haven't actually seen him today. Okay. Well, there aren't any traces of Electro around here anyway. Let's try somewhere else. Wait, he goes hunting with Draft? So that means he's probably set the traps up with Draft. Alright. The last trap has been set. Razor, thanks for coming with me all this way. It's okay. My legs are strong. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, see? He's he's just hunting with giraffe. What is it, Razor? It smells familiar. Friend. From far away. Razor! He smells us. Hi, Razor. Oh, and it's giraffe too. Are you two hunting together? Yes. It's almost harvest season, and the boars are venturing into the towns and wineries looking for food. They're trampling crops and destroying the vineyards. Someone could get seriously hurt. Oh no. The Knights of Favonius came to us asking for help, keeping the boars a safe distance away from the population. I and Uncle Brown Cat catch boars, protect <laughs> everyone. Uncle Brown Cat? <laughs> That's a cute nickname. Wow, Razor. This is a big step for you. Paimon remembers you used to hide away from the hunters. <laughs> you can say that again. Razor was the star of the show this time. He let the wolves know we'd be coming, so we were able to get through Wolvendom without anyone getting hurt. Helping everyone, helping Lupacall, makes me happy. <sighs> but much talking. Very tired now. <laughs> it's still progress. I'm happy. Yeah! But, um, actually, we came here today because we have some really important news. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. I don't know. Razor, do you mean you don't want to know about your real parents? I want to know, but don't want to know. Aww. Traveler, come and take a look at the trap I just placed. Let's give Razor some space to process things. We've been hunting together a lot recently. The kid might not talk much, but still, I feel like I've come to understand him a little over the time we've spent together. Here's what I think. He definitely wants to find out about his parents. It's just that his fear of the unknown is overwhelming everything else he's feeling. Understandable. I'm a father myself, so I know a thing or two about kids. You know, when Diana was little, if I got back late from a hunt one night, she'd be watching me like a hawk for days afterwards, as if 
She was worried that I might abandon her. Yeah, or maybe because you were a drunkard, dude. Do you mean Razor's worried that he was abandoned by his own parents? An understandable worry. Exactly. I think that's the heart of it. And if it turns out they did, well, I don't think there's anything we could say to console him. That's not my only concern, though. Yeah, I think that's why it's easier to accept that he's just been raised by wolves all of his life than to just, like, go through the mystery of there being parents for him out somewhere. Razor is developing at his own pace. There are lots of issues that can't be solved all in one go, but he's making progress one step at a time. But now this thing with his parents is added into the mix. It might push him to want to figure out once and for all where he comes from and where he's going. Seems like a similar take to Lisa's. Hmm. Maybe all mature adults think like this, huh? This is called maturity, kids. Sometimes things like this take time to process and understand, and even to just consider wanting to find out about. Wait, but then again, Master Jean had a different view. She said it's more about trusting other people and in your own instincts. <sighs> what do you think? I'll be there for him as a friend through this because the most important thing is being there for him. Well, knowing that he's got a friend like you to rely on makes me feel much better about this whole thing. Come on, how about this? Okay, got it. Right, let's head back. We don't want to keep him waiting. He's staring. Hey, Razor. So, what are your thoughts? Still thinking. My heart feels strange like Aww. being stabbed by a wolf hook oh what do you think of varka varka hmm tall very strong likes to laugh then do you trust varka yes trust he's very good to me give me a name teach me to fight but now busy with important work i miss him you know razor Varka used up all the paper writing this letter, but he still made sure he found room on the back to add a note for Lisa. He specifically told her to give you the things that your parents left for you. That means that he thinks the items have a special meaning for you. Yeah. But more importantly than that, whatever happens, the Traveler, Paimon, Lisa, and all your other friends will always be here for you. This is a nice message. Don't worry, everything will be fine, Razor. That's right. And old Uncle Brown Cat's here to support you as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I decide... I want to go with you. To see Teacher. <laughs> That's the spirit, kiddo. Yeah. Well, you folks better be heading off then. I'm just about finished here, so I'll be heading home very shortly myself. <sighs> I'd better try and get plenty of father-daughter time in before the uh, fine laser fest starts. <laughs> oh my yeah. goodness, dude. Come on. Don't go drinking again. Lisa, we brought Razor. Hello, teacher. I'm here to see the box. Ah, oh, my little wolf cub's in a good mood. <laughs> I'm assuming they've discussed wolf the whole cub. story with you already. Here, this is it. The wooden box. I haven't touched it, except for taking it out of the cabinet. When you're sure you're ready, you can open it yourself. Mm-hmm. Yes. I am sure. Oh! This is just... a pile of junk! Oh! Alright. Um, this is a very controversial statement. It comes off rude as hell to say this to someone who literally is like finding the stuff left by their parents for the first time ever, which is understandable. You know, that's completely fine. I was upset about it too when I saw the screenshot of it. I also understand that this is actually just a translation error. In the other languages, they don't call it a pile of junk. They just call it like, like items. But however, what I will say, despite this being just a translation error, I feel like stuff like this shouldn't happen. I don't know what the English translation team is doing, but they definitely don't need to be changing Paimon's words like this to, you know, make her seem like a different person. I don't know if it's intentional or not, but I definitely think that this leaves a bad impression because it kind of changes Paimon's character in a way. You know, everyone needs to be on the same page so there's no arguments going on about, you know, how the characters are acting like because 
we already know that everyone likes to mischaracterize Genshin characters. So to sum it up, I know that this is a translation error and that's understandable. However, this still shouldn't happen. Uh oh. You don't think that after all this time, Barka might be getting mixed up between different boxes? No. <laughs> there is a scent. A scent? What kind? A scent. I remember from a long, long time ago. It's their scent. Aww. Human scent. Father and mother scent. Aww, he still remembers the smell. Oh, incredible. You still remember scents from all the way back in your childhood. Wow. You have a really good sense of smell, Razor. Guess being wild by nature has its advantages. Bruh. This woolen hand puppet looks kind of wonky. Wonky? It must be handmade, huh? Is this a part from a ruin guard? <laughs> hey, look. This wine bottle is still half full. Uh, Thousand Wind Wine. Oh, so it's a bottle of Thousand Wind Wine? Uh-huh, what is that? Teacher, you know? Of course. Thousand Wind Wine was the first kind of wine that Mondstadters ever learned to make, or so they say. Oh. As to how it got its name, some say it's a reference to the numerous ingredients used to make it, while others say it's because every bottle tastes slightly different. I remember reading somewhere that there are all sorts of weird and wonderful ways of brewing it, and that it's very difficult to ensure it comes out tasting the same each time. This all makes it impractical to commercialize. Oh. Wine merchants are much more comfortable working with reliable, consistent tasting products. True. Unless you build a brand upon like a wine, like having a wine that's kind of just like a roulette. That's why you'll almost never see Thousand Win wine in the markets or taverns. So it's kind of rare. Huh. In fact, it looks like your parents brewed this bottle themselves. That must mean there's something pretty important about it. <gasps> oh, Paimon has an idea! Razor, you got a good nose. Why don't you open it up and take a whiff? Maybe it'll tell you something. Okay. Huh. He seems really in the zone. <laughs> and He's smiling. He smile? <laughs> Find anything? Sweet. Cold. A little bitter. I like. Many things all mixed together. Ugh, but things in wine smell different. Uh-huh. Even you can't tell what it is, Razor? I will try again. <sighs> it's okay, Razor. Don't push yourself too hard. What do we do when we try something and it doesn't work? Try another way. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You still remember what I taught you. Oh, it's almost the Vine Lisa Fest. Everyone who knows anything worth knowing about wine will be gathering in Mondstadt. Surely someone will know a thing or two about Thousand Wind Wine. Oh, great idea! True. Well, Venti be- Oh, Venti could probably know something about it. Make sure you don't miss the opening ceremony, cutie. Everyone will be there. Razor, you should go too. It'll be a good opportunity to ask around. Okay. Ask many people. I will try. Aww. Don't worry. We'll be right there with you. We can be your go-betweens. You know, like you are with the wolves for draft. Uh-huh. Interesting comparison. We'll be there with you, just like we promised. Okay. Then I will go back now. I need to tell Lupacall about human mother and human father. Great! See you at the opening ceremony. As Razor's teacher, I'm so happy to see him taking this first step. And you must be tired from running around trying to find Razor. Why don't you rest here a while? I'll make you a nice cup of tea. I don't even like tea. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. I am pleased to announce that this year's Vinlesa Fest has officially begun. We hope the residents of Mondstadt and visitors from all over will enjoy the magnificent wines and experience the joy of the harvest. When Wind Coming Day arrives, we will hold a grand toasting ceremony to welcome the Animo Archon Barbados back home. Oh, yeah! Let the wind lead. Let the wind lead, yeah! Oh, wait, there's Venti. <laughs> what? Let the wind lead! Razor, you're here already! Hmm, 
so many people. Aww. Come on, let's sneak out of here. There's someone we gotta find. Find? Who? Just some tone deaf bard. But oh, there he is. He's also a know it all and loves nothing more than drinking, so he might actually be able to help. Yeah. Traveler, Paimon, how do you do? <laughs> I had a feeling I'd run into you soon during <laughs> this most enchanting of festivals. Spoken like a true poet. <laughs> hmm. But reading between the lines here, if one bottle is tipsy and two is merry, just how many is enchanting exactly? Uh, all of them? <laughs> oh, don't say that. This festival has so much more to offer than just drinking. Anyway, hey, Razor. How have you been? All right. I have a question. Yeah, Razor has something he wants to ask you about. Know anything about Thousand Wind Wine? Ooh, now there's a name that takes me back. <laughs> Let me think. How long has it been since I last heard someone mention Thousand Wind Wine? Razor's parents left him a box with a half bottle of wine inside. And there's a label on it that says Thousand Wind Wine. Yep. We heard there's a lot of history behind this type of wine. And the brewing methods go way, way back. So we figured you'd be a good person to ask. It smells good, but don't know what's inside. Yeah, so do you know anything? I see, I see. So you want to know how Thousand Wind Wine is made? Well, you came to the right person. I happen to know a little rhyme called... Well, as it happens, Thousand Wind Wine. Uh -huh. I was going to save it for wind coming day, but far be it from me to deny an early serenade to a friend in need. How about it? Shall I recite it for you? A song. Not easy to understand, but still want to hear. Alright, we'll translate for him. Excellent answer. Then, uh, hear it you shall. Fill up the barrels and store them away. Then wait, wait for a windier day. Wax the bottles, seal them tight. For the south wind that soothes, for the north wind that bites. Okay. How does this fine wine taste to the tongue? As Mondstadt to the ear, like a sweet dream of freedom. And what are the fruits that went into the brew? An explorer's courage, a love tender and true. A defender's will, strong as yesteryear. Joining the thousand winds in a song of good cheer. Turning sour into sweet, bitter notes fade away. As we wait, wait for a windier day. Okay, so that's basically most of the things that Razor describes. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for the applause. Uh, was the rhyme of help to you? Uh, kind of. Like wine. A little sweet, but now head spinning. <laughs> don't understand. <laughs> don't worry. Good it's analogy. You. That was supposed to be about winemaking, but it didn't give a single detail about the process. <laughs> well, maybe it's a little abstract and romanticized, but that's one of the defining features of Mondstadt poetry. Uh-huh. Okay, so let's try to pin this down. What did the poem say the ingredients are? Um, an explorer's courage, a love tender and true, a defender's will, and the thousand winds? Song of good cheer? Hmm, I can't think of any ingredients that would use that. Nope, Paimon has absolutely no idea what any of these refer to. <laughs> I'm with her on this, for once. Look. Tone deaf bard, you clearly know what the whole thing means, so could you do us a favor and at least give us a hint? No. You misunderstand me. I'm not trying to make you work for it or anything, but the lyrics are what they are. If there's anything they left out, even I can't fill in the blanks. Huh. If you want to know the secret behind this sweet scent, you might have to start by rolling up your sleeves. Rolling up our sleeves? You mean we need to go and make this wine for ourselves? And somehow that'll teach us everything we want to know? Uh, this better not be a prank! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I feel like this makes sense, though. Because if if the wine basically tastes different almost every time that it's made, then maybe it's very abstract and vague because it's supposed to represent something that we're supposed to make by ourselves with the ingredients that we think it's supposed to be made with. Which is why it tastes different every single time. <sighs> 
We've known each other for so long, and you still don't trust my intentions? <laughs> oh, oh, the pain. <laughs> uh, I trust. I want to try. I want to make wine and find answers. If I know how to make wine, then I know what is in father and mother's wine. By relieving, by relieving their actions, maybe we'll understand what kind of people they were. Right. I want to know about them. Well, if you say so, Razor, guess we'll have to take Tone Deaf Bard's word on this one. We'll give it a try, and as first-time winemakers, there's no shame if it turns out bad. Don't worry, really. Oh. Freedom is the key here. It's <laughs> not as hard as you might think. Rosaria, come back here. <laughs> as long as you add ingredients to the mix in a spirit of joy and sincerity, I promise you will reap the rewards you wish for. Hmm. I will tell Poem to teach her. Then I need to think alone. Mm -hmm. That's the spirit. So how about we meet again in two days? Let's say same place right here? Okay. I will remember. See you then. <laughs> Okay. I am fond of each and every one of Mondstadt's festivals. But if I'm honest, Vinelaser Fest has an extra special place in my heart. You know, the uh -huh. animal Archon goes into a slumber after the west wind dies down, leaving the north wind to blow during the winter. Which means this festival is the big feast before the winter slumber. <laughs> this is like his feast before hibernation. About Razor. I wouldn't worry yourself too much about him. Staying true to their journey and discovering joy and freedom for themselves is what Mondstatters do best. The same goes for you. You have to find the thing that makes you happy. <laughs> Mostly because your happiness is very important to me. Aw, thank you, Venti. It's a whole day later, and I will be honest, I'm feeling sick. Let me tell you, these booster shot headaches are not to be messed with. Where the heck's Razor? Paimon thought he would have been here by now. Hmm. He had a pretty big day when we last saw him. Do you think he fell asleep when he got back and is still snoozing away now? It sounds more like something you'd do than Razor. Fair enough. You're right. Let's keep waiting. <laughs> Since we've got some time on our hands, let's put our heads together and try to figure out that poem. An explorer's courage, a love tender and true, a defender's will, and the thousand winds song of good cheer. Do you have any ideas? Maybe they aren't the ingredients, but maybe they describe the wine's character. Eesh, that's even more abstract. Uh Here we go looking for this wine's character. The Adventurer's Guild, the Church of Favonius. Are you saying that it has something to do with Mondstadt's institution? Yeah, and as for the word defender, it makes me think of the Knights of Favonius. That actually makes a surprising amount of sense. So the poem wasn't talking about any specific ingredients after all. More like the general gist. Yeah. Now that you mention it, it just so happens that all the institutions you mentioned are organizers of the Vinelaser Fest. Wait, this is way too big of a coincidence. That Toad Death Bard, did he just make all this up on the <laughs> No, there's no way he did. No way. Perhaps he did as a way of helping us to help Razor. In that case, the last part about the Thousand Winds Song of Cheer must be code for the toasting ceremony. Oh, now we're cooking! We oh cracked my. your riddle recipe yet, Tone Deaf Bard! What is she cooking? Mr. Honorary Knight! <gasps> Klee! Hi, Klee! I'm sorry. I'm late. That's alright. They were just chatting. Traveler's pretty smart, so thanks to him, we're finally on to something! Hi, Klee. Hi, Razor. Hi. I was on my way, then I saw Klee. They let me out for Vinyl Lisa Fest. <laughs> they let me out. <laughs> she was in prison again, I see. Albedo is super busy helping Timaeus fix his recipe for an extra strong sobriety potion. So he doesn't have time to come play with me right now. 
I'm Aww. just playing by myself instead. Aww. But it's so cool! All the grown-ups in Mondstadt are out to celebrate the festival! Everyone's smiling and having loads of fun! Aww. I wanted to join in too, so I made a whole bunch of stuff so I can celebrate with everyone in my very own uh, way. Uh, wait, what do you mean by that? Uh-oh, this does not bode well coming from Glee. <laughs> And that's when I bumped into Razor. Bomb crisis averted. <laughs> Razor was acting kind of different than usual. Like he was thinking about something. So I asked him what happened. And then Razor said that he was looking for his mommy. Yeah. I did not say mommy. <laughs> oh, it's okay, silly. Mommies are important people, so finding your mommy is a super important job. That's why Clee's gonna come help. <sighs> <laughs> She's so cute. Ra Bennett! Razor, finally, I found you. What's up, Bennett? Bennett? Oh, <laughs> look who's here. Hey, everyone. Here, this is for you. Hi, Bennett. Uh, small lampgrass? Uh, a small lampgrass? Yep, that's right. I tripped up on it this morning and took a little tumble. Uh-huh. I did a full face plant, but somehow, this little thing came out completely unscathed. That's when I knew it was destined to go into your wine mix. <laughs> How kind. What a nice thought. Thank you, Bennett. Bennett? How did you manage to trip up on a small lampgrass? <laughs> Even Clee's like, damn, you that clumsy? Shit, dog. That's true. They do glow after all. No, no. I wasn't talking about the glowing. What I meant was they're really big and easy to spot. So I don't get how you didn't see it. Uh. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was just running too fast and got careless, I guess. No, he's just Bennett. Okay. I guess maybe I won't tell them about the other face plants that came. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've been all over the place trying to find Razor this morning. Everyone I asked told me I just missed him. Good thing I've caught up now. I can finally catch my breath. How did you know I need ingredients? Oh, that? Yeah, interesting story. This lady came to see Master Cyrus, asking for the Adventurer Guild's support with the Vine Lace Fest. She said she was a librarian. Anyway, she mentioned oh. your situation too, and asked if we could help. Wait, that's, uh, that's Lisa. Whoa. Lisa is doing some real work for once? D she could do real work. She does work better than you do, Paimon. Oh, so that was Lisa? People say she's crazy intelligent, but just doesn't go out much. First time I've ever seen her. You've been living here for how long and you've never seen her? I thought long and hard about what ingredients to pick and came up with a load of suggestions that I was going to discuss with you. But then I realized that small lampgrass was clearly the best. It shines a light to guide the way for explorers in the dark. Doesn't that sound like a wonderful thing? Oh, apologies for the trouble. Ah, don't give me that. I get how you must be feeling about all of this. Besides, you gotta help out your friends, right? Damn, real. If my family, uh, well, my dad's ever needed help one day, I know you'd be there for me too. Oh yeah, that's right. He has multiple dads. Can I help too? Please take me with you, please. Aww, we can't say no to that. Clee's in high spirits today. She seems more excited by this festival than anyone. Bennett, before now, you never talk about your family. Uh, <laughs> well, that's because I never met my parents. Yeah. I was raised by some of the older adventurers in the guild, so we're not exactly a typical family. Yeah. But if you do want to hear about them, I can tell you some of my dad's stories. Hmm. Okay, I'll start with the most awesome one. Oh, Bennett. You can be Mommy's kid, just like Clee. My mom is super nice. She'll take great care of you. Aww. Huh? Do you want to be Alice's kid? You both do use Pyrovision, so um, I'm sure she'll try to make you extremely strong. I really appreciate the thought, Clee, but I'm afraid I can't accept your offer. I already have my dads and all my friends. And let's not forget that I'm the leader of Benny's adventure team. You don't need to worry about me. Aw. Oh, okay. I got it. Um, then have this. 
Wait, she gave him a bomb! It's a lazy, dopey, jumpy dumpty that always dozes and never explodes. Oh. oh you guys can be best friends. It's just a dud. That's cute. Are you sure? Yep. Jumpy Dumpty will be happy to make a new friend too. <laughs> I'm also happy for you. I still have to look for ingredients with razors, so why don't you two go adventuring together? Good idea! Maybe Cree will bring Bennett some good luck, and the adventure will go smoothly. And you might just find some treasures you'd never noticed before. Of course, it's also highly possible that Cree will be the only one who gets lucky. Yeah, some jumpy dumpties are gonna roll out of her backpack accidentally, and then he's gonna like step on them and like somehow explode them. On the flip side, Cree won't be getting into any trouble with Bennett there, and this way she'll still get to enjoy the violence of fest. Cool. Don't worry about a thing. We'll look after each other. Yay! Adventure! Treasure! Find Lisa Fest! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, but what about Wolfie? She calls him Wolfie? Uh, I'm uh -huh. looking after her. Honorary night, Paimon, you'd better take care of Razor, okay? Make sure he finds his mommy. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like to. He's like, mommy. Good luck. See you later, folks. Oh, Paimon almost forgot the whole reason we came here. Razor, the Traveler and Paimon were just chatting about the ingredients Venti mentioned in his poem. We think that they're actually a description of the wine's characteristics. Plus, it seems like each of them means something special to one of the three big institutions in Mondstadt. So, if we talk to some people we know at each place, maybe we'll find what you're looking for. There's gonna be a lot of places we have to go to, though. <sighs> What's wrong? Something on your mind? Do you want to talk about it? Yes. These days, I think a lot. You're doing a lot of thinking. I am not smart. Nah! Not like teacher. Not like traveler. But I still have to think. Everyone is ready to help, but... Some things I must do myself. I don't understand human father and mother, but I must find a way to understand. Maybe I can learn about other people's father and mother first, then think about my own father and mother. Aw, okay. That's a decent idea. That's why I want to ask questions. That's great! Keep at it, and you'll definitely find the answer eventually. Never knew Bennett is like me. When he talks about dads, his scent changes. His, he changes? Warm. Like a bed of straw in the sun. Aww. Yeah, we should head back into the city. Let's find a friendly face at the Church of Favonius. Now, who does Razor who know this? best at the church? Excuse me? I couldn't help but overhear you're about to head back into the city. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, who are you? I'm waiting on a fruit cart from the city. It should be here now. But I'm getting worried that something may have happened on the way. But I can't leave the festival to check up on it. Would you be able to do me a huge favor and keep an eye out for the cart on your way back? Sure. Um, Another well, commission. It's on the way. Okay, we go. Everyone helps Oops. me. Now I have chance to help everyone. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> this way. Oh, Paimon sees the cart, but what? doing here do they want some fresh fruit now too oh no to the rescue <laughs> we did it that might have been a little overkill o okay you can stop y y you you oh, jesus you are just in time any later and all you found here is a pile of pulp and i don't think there'd be much left of the fruit either oh jesus thanks again i'd better not delay this delivery any longer so Goodbye and happy Vine Lisa Fest. Did nobody notice this? Like, the festival is over there. I'm sure you could have heard, like, screams or something. <sighs> What's it, what is it, Razor? Enemy following. Uh oh. Enemy? <laughs> I think we're a little closer than oh. that. Oh. Hi, Rosaria. <laughs> Razor, you are so good at catching people. On some level, you could even say that we're brother and sister. Uh huh. Rosaria? It's been a while since we've seen Rosaria too. I think the last time we even saw her was during the uh the previous Windbloom festival. Uh, wait. Actually, turning up at random places is pretty normal for you. True. 
Okay, next question. What the heck do you mean, brother and sister? Varka taught you how to use that sword, I take it. Swift, but powerful. <laughs> I can spot that old-timer's style anywhere. Uh, huh? <laughs> I see you're not much of a talker. <laughs> well, there's something else you could learn from Varka. Never lost for words, even when he has nothing to say. It'd be good conversation practice for you. Just a shame we have no idea when I'll be back. True. It's okay. I will wait. Brother and sister? Varka? So did they train under Varka? Oh, Paimon gets it. Varka is a father figure to both of them, so that makes them family. Just not by blood. Yeah, makes sense. Well, blood relations are overrated anyway, don't you think? What? What do you mean by that? I get it. In the final moments of your life, the people there with you won't necessarily be your blood relatives. What? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Cold, dark, grown-up. You also uh. don't remember what <laughs> your real mother and real father look like? Huh. So you're helping him dig up some info on his biological parents. And trying to help him build a concept of family along the way. You could say that. All right, you got me. I barely have any memories of my birth parents. The Damn. last time I saw them was long before I had any understanding of the world around me. Damn, none of the people we're playing with got any parents, bruh. Klee is literally the only person with a parent. Bennett doesn't know his real parents. Rosara doesn't know her real parents. Razor doesn't know his real parents. Damn. But that seems pretty common. Even in this day and age, there are plenty of people in the world who can't stop thinking about their families, but will never get to see them. Anyway, if you're never going to meet someone, it's not worth spending mental energy on them. It's more important to focus on the kind of person you want to become. I think for some people, it would help get them a peace of mind. No, you are wrong about this. Lupacol protect each other. Human family, also important. Must care about them. Yeah. Fine. So let's say you do find out who your parents were and they were saints. Or the opposite, they were complete monsters. What then? How would that affect your life choices? What would you do about it? Um... That's a hard one for Razor to answer. I mean, it's normal to be curious, for sure. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to make this any more difficult than it already is. But Razor's feeling lost and confused right now. And all the other monstatters we know are too sunny and bright to tell it like it really is. <laughs> She's trying to be real. The sun nurtures many good things. But it can't do anything about the problems lurking in the shadows. Wow, Rosaria. All right, I'll leave it there. <laughs> Take this flower. It's icy cold, just like me. Barbara's busy preparing the sung poetry event for the Vine Lace Fest. Barbara. She couldn't get away, so I picked an ingredient out on behalf of the church. But can we really use a mist flower? Won't it freeze the entire barrel? No, not now that I've dealt with it. The bard did say to think freedom, didn't he? So go on, take it. It won't be a problem. Yeah. Aw, Rosaria! You're more thoughtful than Paimon realized! Oh god, don't be chummy. Uh, wait! You heard the bard say that?! Were you spying on us?! Thank you. Don't mention it. It's nothing. Varka's been a big help to me in the past, so just consider it returning a favor. Besides, if I'm your older sister, I might as well act like it. Uh-huh. Good luck finding your answers. Now you see her, now you don't. I'm on slowly getting used to her style. Uh-huh. And now we won't be seeing her until the Ludi Har passed him. Her words are like mist flower. They are cold and they sting. Yeah. But cold also good for wounds. Like wolf hook. I need to think about it. Maybe then I will understand. It'll take some time. There's no need to rush. Okay. I will come with you. I think while we walk. It's nice seeing all the Mondstadt characters again, you know? No matter how cool all the other characters look and how many new characters are introduced, I feel like nothing can replace the feeling that the old Mondstadt characters give me. Something about Mondstadt and its characters are just something that you can't replace. Oh, just in time. Lisa and I were just talking about Razor's situation. Where were we? Ah, yes. The barrel. 
But uh, obviously the nuts part is supposed to be a defender's will. But what kind of ingredient is a barrel? <laughs> Not what he means. Is your brain half asleep or something? It doesn't <laughs> make any sense at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Paimon, don't worry. You'll get your ingredient. I've already tasked someone with sorting it out. The person is very conscientious and wants to properly research their contribution. So it may take some time, but hopefully it'll be worth the wait. Hmm. As for the barrel, how else were you planning on mixing all the ingredients? Surely not in the giant cooking pot at Dada Upa Gorge. Oh boy, that shit will taste nasty. After much deliberation, I realized this was a job for the most sociable and savviest member in our ranks, the cavalry captain. So I asked him to take a trip to the Dawn Winery and somehow bring back a wine barrel. Okay. Uh, all right, spare me the flattery, Lisa. We're all <laughs> friends here, and I know you're only trying to help your student. <laughs> but I haven't been back there in a long time. This could be quite difficult to accomplish in just a single trip. Difficult? For you? Don't be silly. Negotiating is your biggest strength. <laughs> yeah, because he likes to talk a lot. <laughs> Fine Lisa Fest is one of the most important festivals in Mondstadt. And you know how D. Luke thinks better than anyone. Oh boy, we're gonna have D. Luke and Kaya interaction? Oh yes! Just drop a few little hints. Oh yeah. Like how this is the first festival Mondstadt has had in a long time. We're short on much needed supplies for a multitude of reasons. Oh, who can help us? <laughs> when he hears that, I guarantee you he'll offer to help out with finances and sourcing goods. Lisa's literally trying to extort Master D. Luke. <laughs> hmm. I suppose. All right, I'll head out right away. And Paimon was just about to thank Lisa for the things she's been doing for Razor behind the scenes. <laughs> well. Oh, Paimon doesn't even know whose side to be on anymore. <laughs> <sighs> Traveler and teacher did a lot for me. A lot of work. But me, I still can't answer questions. So useless. Dear me, what's gotten you so upset, my little wolf cub? We can't have you being so down in the dumps. There's some questions you can't stop thinking about. Hmm, cutie. How about you keep Kaya company while I stay here and help Razor process his feelings? As his teacher, I owe him some tutelage anyway. Okay. Come and collect him in a few days' time. The last ingredient should be ready by then as well. <laughs> few days? Damn. Splendid. I was just thinking about how nice it would be to have some company on my trip. I don't know what is right, but I trust teacher. I accept. Lisa, you're a godsend. Thank you. Oh, well, aren't you a sweet one? But this is as much my business as yours. It's my pleasure, really. Run along now, and don't forget to tell D. Luke that the Knights of Favonia send our regards. Oh, gosh. My heart feels like rotten berries. So sour. I don't understand what I should do. Aww. Oh, all right. I'll teach you a very special magic trick that can make all your troubles disappear in the blink of an eye. Oh, boy. But before we do that... Let's warm up with something a little bit easier, hmm? Let's practice some talking. That way, the next time somebody helps you, or you have a different opinion from the rest of the group, you'll be able to express what you think clearly and precisely. Aww. Okay. I will do my best. Kaya, you're fond of a good drink, aren't you? My Lacefest must be right up your alley. Uh, Kaya? Uh, uh-oh. Oh, I'm sorry. My mind was elsewhere. What was your question? Ugh. Never mind. Nothing that important. <laughs> Hi there, Master D. Luke. What's up, D. Luke? Oh, I was just wondering who'd be coming all the way out here during the Vine Laser Fest. So it's you two. Uh, you three, actually. <sighs> and you two. <laughs> <sighs> so cold. Almost enough to make me feel unwelcome here, Master D. Luke. Oh boy. Don't forget that this is my home, too. I'm fairly certain that taking a trip home during festival season is a universal custom, common to all the cultures of Tevat. Please get to the point. <laughs> the point is one that you've already raised yourself. The Vinlesa Fest. To celebrate this long-awaited festival, the Acting Grand Master has been coordinating with both the Church and the Adventurer's Guild to host a series of events. 
Unfortunately, given the financial situation of the Knights of Favonius, well, I'm sure you can imagine. They would need help from you. And the Knights of Favonius's woes have what exactly to do with me? <laughs> hey, no need to be so cruel. Even I'm not going to take that. Everyone's just doing the best they can for Mondstadt. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember the last time I tasted Don Winery's Weinlesefest special. And I'm sure the Mondstadt populace would echo this sentiment. Uh -huh. Are you going to deny others the opportunity to drink to their heart's content just because you don't like to drink yourself? Yep. Check it out. Kai is not so subtly asking for freebies. He's actually doing it. What a guy. I don't think it'll work, though. I mean, d Luke knows Kai are the best. Anyway, speaking of the knights, everyone dearly hopes that you'll rejoin our ranks again one day. Then we'll be one big happy family again. <laughs> if we were able to enjoy the sterling reputation of Master D. Luke, my, I'm sure people would be queuing for our charity booth all the way to Falcon Coast. <sighs> Give that silver tongue of yours a rest. <laughs> we might need it to maintain public order at the festival. I told you. Duly noted on the financial issues you raised. I'll have Elzer follow up with Hertha in more detail. And I just so happen to have a batch of wine that I can offer as a token of appreciation to everyone that has been working so hard for the festival. <laughs> that doesn't include you. Shall I address it to you personally? That would be an absurd request, even for me. The words, with compliments from the Dawn Winery, ought never be preceded by, to the cavalry captain. Is that not the unwritten rule? Mm. You're better informed than I thought. In that case, I will leave this with Adeline and keep everything anonymous. True. That's probably the best way. I really can't thank you enough. Master d Luke is so generous. <laughs> That's all Paimon needs to get that warm, fuzzy feeling. Uh, which is just as well since you won't be allowed to drink a drop. <laughs> <laughs> Are you two here regarding the Vine Lacer Fest too? Um, <clears throat> Actually, we're here about a barrel... Poor Razor. He grew up so fast. And he's still looking for his father. Master Diluc, we really ought to lend him a hand. How come Klee said he's looking for his mom, but Kaya says he's looking for his dad? It might make more sense to them, but it's gonna get confusing for everyone else. Uh, well, I feel like there's a reason why Kaya said that. It's okay. I understand. We have a spare barrel in the winery. It's a little old, but it's been specially treated for durability. You could leave it next to a flaming flower all day and there wouldn't be a scratch. Damn. I think that one should satisfy your needs. Wait, so if there's a fire, can I sit inside the barrel and be fine? Sounds great! We'll take it! When can we come fetch it? No need. I'll have someone deliver it to the festival market. Just collect it from the angel share stand. For us, Master D. Luke. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Razor will really appreciate it. You're more than welcome. Helping each other is what friends do. Wonderful. Always eager to help, and never forgets to return a favor. That's the Master D. Luke I know. Oh, it's nearly dinner time. Uh, would you care to stay for a meal? Oh, dinner. How time flies. I'll be on my way then. Uh, no, come on, stay with us. <laughs> How did you put it? Ah, oh, yes. Taking a trip home during festival season is a universal custom, common to all the cultures of Tevat. Now that even Master Diluc has made an offer, are you quite sure you won't stay for a meal after coming all this way, Master Kaya? Yeah, Adeline, get him. I couldn't possibly, Adeline. I wouldn't want to trouble you. Oh, don't say that. How often do I get a chance to indulge my dear Master Kaya, hmm? Uh, <laughs> Tea for the cavalry captain when you visit in an official capacity doesn't count. I only get to spoil you if you let me cook for you. Yeah, yeah, let's get him. Oh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> he can't resist that. Well then, what happened to your swagger? Lost for words? <laughs> <laughs> Diluc. You... That is the first time I've seen Kaya, like, be speechless. Surely you wouldn't dream of disappointing Adeline. The more the merrier. All right, then. 
I'll take you up on the offer. Adeland, one more set of cutlery, please, if you'd be so kind. Nice. Adeline's cooking's amazing. Everything looked and tasted so beautiful. Thank you for your hospitality. I enjoyed it as well. Glad you liked it. You're welcome to join again anytime. Oh? Then I may have to tag along on the traveler's adventures more often in the future. Oh, that would be great, actually. Ugh, Kai is back to his usual ways. <laughs> All right, now that our task is complete and our bellies are full, it's time for me to get back to work. <laughs> Immediately leaves. Take care, Master Kaya. Have a safe trip back. We should get going as well. Lisa's taking care of Razor, but the Vinelays of Fest can't do without us. See you next time, Master D. Luke. Bye, D. Luke. Indeed. Goodbye. Family, huh? <sighs> Don't mind me. You should probably head back and get some rest. Don't think about it too much, D. Luke. It's okay. I'm not the most familiar with Razor. But you can contact me if you ever need help. It's been a long time since I saw Masters D. Luke and Kaya sharing a meal together. The atmosphere was... Ahem... <clears throat> was not something that a maid of my lowly stature should be commenting on. <laughs> Thank you so much for visiting. I hope to see you again soon. I wish we got to see more of D. Luke. Last anecdote. We haven't seen Amber all this time. I want to see Amber. We've seen Lisa and Kaya. We've even seen Rosaria and Benny. But we haven't seen anything about Amber. Give me some Amber action. Hmm. Paimon wonders how Razor's class has been going. Uh, Sucrose, wait. <gasps> Noel. Why am I getting this despite I, 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 I've played Noel before. I have literally played Noel before. And I've even done her, her hangout. Oh, Please stop her. Hi, Sucrose. Where, where is she going? Whoa, you scared Paimon. What's gotten the two of you so worked up? Sucrose and I agreed to present the wine ingredient to you together. But when she heard that Razor will be showing up, she insisted that she won't spend a moment longer here than she has to. What? Why? I, I'm not good at dealing with strangers. Anyway, as long as the ingredient gets into the right hands, that's all that matters. Oh, that won't do. We worked on this together, and we should present it together. I can't take credit for what you did. Aww. It's not about the credit. Wait, so does this mean the Knights of Avonius' ingredient is a product of bioalchemy? Yes, it's a quadruple sweetness sunsetia. What? Quadruple sweetness? But aren't regular ones sweet enough as it is? Also, why is sunsetia? Okay, um... Let me give you the full story. I love the scent of wine. And after reading up on the art of winemaking, I have grasped some of the key principles. Okay. In short, whatever ingredients you use, it's essential to include something sweet. In an attempt to select the most suitable ingredient, I gathered samples of all the sweet plants and fruits I could find in the Mondstadt area. Then, I tried them all in turn and took detailed notes. Is the sweet flower too sweet for this? I also factored in the differences between the same ingredient grown in different locations. For instance, sweet flowers from Springvale are a little sweeter than those at Cape Oath. Wow, that sounds like a lot of work. It was no problem at all. Just my duty as a maid of Favonius. The chance to source the Defender's will on behalf <laughs> of the Knights of Favonius is a huge honor for me. Yeah, let's go, Noelle. Let's get her accepted into the Knights of Avonius because of this. Noelle, your eyes are sparkling. But Paimon thinks it could be because of Lisa's brainwash. Paimon, shush. Um, anyway, I, I was worried that my evaluation would be too subjective if only I were involved. Thankfully, I ran into Sucrose the other day on her way out of the lab. Oh, no. What is it, Sucrose? I just remembered why I left the lab that day. I was supposed to go and fetch some lab equipment we imported recently. Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> uh -oh. That look on your face seems to say you forgot all about it and have been in the lab this whole time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I'm so sorry. <sighs> Don't worry about it. It's my fault, really. I'll go and see Marjorie about the equipment shortly. Carry on, Noel. Oh, okay. 
Anyway, Sucrose is a true professional when it comes to this kind of research. I showed her my list, and she made some extremely valuable suggestions. Please, you don't need to go out of your way to compliment me. <laughs> Sucrose is so shy. Noel filled me in on the background of the whole situation. I was moved to see how seriously she took this task, even though she'd never even met Razor before. However, none of the potential ingredients she had identified were perfect candidates, in my opinion. Really? What we needed was a fruit high in sugar and easily fermentable. Oh, they need After to be fermentable. Look at Noel's list, I picked this Ancetia sample from near Cider Lake as a basis, with a view to improving it. Using bioalchemical techniques, we were able to amplify the sweetness, then conduct a few tests to compare the results against the benchmarks. Watching Sucrose work on an experiment when she's in the zone blew me away. Such focus and determination. I already said don't compliment me. <laughs> it's... Anyway, the result of our research is the Epsilon series Tetrasweets and Sedia, variation 63. And it's finally ready. The sweetness has been verified through rigorous testing, and the size and color are both optimal too. Noel shortened the name to Quadruple Sweetness and Sedia. Quadruple Sweetness Sunsetia. Unfortunately, it can't be produced on a very large scale under the current conditions. But as long as we have enough for Razor. Traveler, there's something else I'd like to share with you. Growing up, I was lucky. I was never the best at dealing with other people, but my parents never placed any expectations on me. They never said to me, you need to be more sociable or anything like that. They just said I should do what I enjoy. Okay. So, I'm well aware that I'm one of the lucky ones. Eh, uh, yeah, I guess. I haven't lived Razor's life, and I can't pretend to imagine what it must have been like. So, I don't know how much it will mean coming from me, but I truly hope he can find happiness and spend his life doing what he loves. As long as it comes from somebody who cares, I think that's fine. Oh, Sucrose. What? Oh, she's gone. What's? Sorry, I am late again. Teacher forgot about the time. I kept talking and talking. <laughs> That's all right. We were just chatting. Whoa, deja vu. Paimon said the exact same thing two days ago. <laughs> At some point, Paimon's just gonna get massive deja vu from just saying the same shit all the time. Wait a sec. Where did Sucrose go? <laughs> she ran. Wow. She disappeared the moment he opened the door. Hello, I'm Noelle, maid of the Knights of Pavonius. Hi. Here's our ingredient for you. Oh, but I can't take full credit for it. I had help from an alchemist, but right now, she, um... She's a little busy with work. Right, yes. It's a shame she couldn't be here to present it to you in person. <sighs> Smells like potion, nectar, and... Animal crystal fly, right? It, damn, he was able to tell all that from one sniff. This sunsetia is sweeter than ones I have smelled before. Klee said alchemy is amazing. It can make things better. True. That's right. I hope that this sweet fruit will help you brew the sweetest wine. Alchemist girl also had a message to pass on to you. Spend your life doing what you love. Thank you all. When she has time... I want to thank her also. Leave that to me. I'll figure out a way to persuade her to, uh, to not work so hard all the time so that I can introduce you to each other. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's kind of funny. Okay, I will wait. All right, now that we have all the ingredients, we can finally start making the wine. Yeah. But we'll need a barrel, which if Paimon remembers correctly is waiting for us at the Angel's Share stand. Overall, I think this task was a success. Oh no, Sucrose's lab equipment. I should go help her carry it. Oh, and she's gone. I eventually need to do Noelle's second hangout. Actually, I need to do all the hangouts I haven't done yet. Where is Amber? I need to see Amber. Diona, hi. <laughs> the kids are talking. Traitors. 
traitors. <laughs> she, she probably hates this festival. Uh, um, what? Oh, I'm so mad! Why are they showing me this as if I've never seen Diona in my life? <sighs> Kree told me the whole story. So, this bright idea was the brainchild of you two? Hmm, how could you? Razor is daddy's friend! And he was a good influence! Right up until you got him interested in wine! Uh. <laughs> Razor, you better promise me that you won't turn into one of those old booze hounds that drinks themselves silly slumps over the bar and bursts into tears! <laughs> he can't even drink wine legally. I, uh, I don't understand. Sounds like there's been some crossed wires here. Clee, what exactly did you say to Diona? Um, I told her that Razor is looking for his mommy with the honorary knight's help, and you both seemed really sad and said you needed some wine so maybe Diana could help. Oh, <laughs> might have missed out a couple details, Clay. But before I finished, Diana said, Clee, say no more. I'm getting involved in this if it's the last <laughs> thing I do. <laughs> and Aww. Uh. <laughs> You're missing out on a couple details there, Klee. Hyman doesn't even know where to start. Um, Diona, it sounds like Klee left out a few important details in the story. Let us set the record straight. So you're saying, Razor wants to make the same wine that his mother and father once made? So he can learn more about them? Hmm. You better not be making this up to try to pull the wool over my eyes. No, why would we do that? Sorry, Diona. It was all Klee's fault for not explaining it properly. Oh, it's okay, Klee. So, are you still mad? Or can you help Razor make the wine? I caught a bunch of fish for us to eat. Um, and you can pack Dodoko too if you want. <laughs> I I wasn't that angry. <laughs> uh huh. I, I see the Dodoko is all you need to convince her. We're just trying to help. I understand. I just don't want Razor being led astray. That's all. That's why I may have raised my voice a little bit just now. A little mm. bit. Well, since none of you plan on drinking it, then I suppose I can help you just this once despite my reservations. But I need you to know that I'm a mixer, not a brewer. So I'm used to working with the finished product. If you really want me to start with a bunch of raw ingredients, eh, that's fine. But I can't make any promises about how it'll turn out. Yay! Diona is the best! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> bunch of flatterers. Now watch this. That was quick. Now we just need to find a place to store it. We wait, wait for a windier day. Hmm. Does that mean we need to put it somewhere exposed to the wind? Mm. Maybe wind rise? Very windy. <laughs> yep. If you say the word windy, that's the first place on every Mondstadter's mind. Oh, I would just think of just Mondstadt itself, but... Cool. I want to come too. Don't get blown away. I have to keep an eye on my foolish father, so I won't be joining you. Klee, come and play again some other time. I will, I promise. Oh, hi, Venti. <laughs> what a curious coincidence meeting you here. I oh, am yeah, very coincidental, huh? Come to fart? What are you doing here? Well, I awoke to the most magnificent aroma in the air. After following the sweet scent of fresh fruit to its source, this is where I ended up. Yeah, the fruit is super fresh and super duper sweet. I can smell it as well. <laughs> There's another reason, isn't there? Yes. Oh, uh, I remembered something important. Something that you have to do before sealing the barrel and burying it in the ground. What? We missed something? Hmm. Razor, do you still remember the scent of that half bottle of Thousand Wind wine? I believe there was a hint of bitterness in there. Bitterness. Yes, there was. Yeah. <laughs> and with very good reason, too. The source? This. 
Dandelion seeds? Dandelion seeds? You're familiar with dandelion wine, right? Well, the people of Mondstadt believe that the wind can bring back the soul and also preserve memories. Oh, so this is going to be used to preserve memories. So it's kind of like bittersweet. Dandelion seeds are like living gemstones formed from the first wisps of wind in the year. People add them to the mix at the last second as a way of capturing the wind in the very moment that the barrel is sealed. The memory of that moment is then stored in the wine for all time. So, Thousand Wind Wine is the original dandelion wine. Wow! That's so cool! So now our story will be made into wine too! Yeah! As for why it always has a different scent, well, that's because people have the freedom to include whatever ingredients they want. Exactly! <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! Hmm. What is it, Razor? What you thinking about? In mother and father's wine, I can smell dandelion seeds. But I don't know what else. In my wine, there is a lot of friendship. I still don't understand my mother and father, but I still have you and everyone else. Aww. Everyone has done so much for me. Farka, Teacher, Clee, Bennett, Uncle Brown Cat, Cold Lady, Grown Up with Fake Smile, <laughs> Gray Tough Girl, Person That Smells Like Animal Crystal Fly, Uncle Brown Cat's Daughter, mm -hmm. Green Bard, Paimon, and Traveler. I remember everyone. Making wine is hard work. Making this wine needed everyone working together. Hard work with friends? Not so hard after all. I'm... I'm so happy. Aww. It's very happy to see you happier. Thank you. Friends are also Lupical. Whether I'm human or I'm wolf, it doesn't matter. From now on, all of us are together. Yeah, all of us are Lupical. When I grow up, we will come back here and we will open this wine together. <laughs> what a magnificent monologue. Even as a bard, I don't feel like there's anything else to add. Mm -hmm. All that remains now is to bury the barrel and wait, wait for the fruit to ferment. We're finally done! Paimon feels like a celebration is in order. Um, if Paimon remembers correctly, tomorrow should be wind coming day, right? Wow! The animal god is coming home! Oh, <laughs> she doesn't know. <laughs> ah, that reminds me. I haven't memorized the song for the toasting ceremony yet. <laughs> I'd better get back. Friends, I shall see you all tomorrow. Get a good night's sleep tonight. Wait for the whisper of the gentle breeze to rouse you tomorrow morning. Then come and enjoy a performance by the greatest bard to ever grace the streets of Mondstadt. We did it! Yay! I wonder if this is gonna stay here forever. Razor, you were so cool back there. Cool. But inside, I feel warm. <laughs> <laughs> no, not like that. When you think something's awesome, you can say it's cool or sweet. Oh. Hmm. But I think Clea is sweet. Aww. They're so cute. They're, these two are so adorable. People have shown up to welcome the animal archon. Uh huh? Why is everyone crowded around the angel share stand? Tradition holds that the finest wine of the Vinelesa Fest only goes on sale after the animal archon has tasted it at the toasting ceremony. Everyone's waiting in line for the big moment. Okay. Ugh. So welcoming the animal archon back is just a means to an end for them, huh? <laughs> what about you, Lisa? Are you here for Razor? Yes, I was feeling a little concerned about him, but I just spoke with him, and he tells me that the winemaking went very smoothly. Ah, <sighs> such a relief. A glass of the festival's finest will go down smoothly now, too. Nice. Wow, you too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Razor and the others are over there. You should go say hi. Hey, hey! There you are! Hi, Bennett. Whoa! What's with all these bottles? Selling your own homebrew now? <laughs> these are for Razor. From us. 
Mommy said that everyone's welcoming the animal god today, and we need to give him some wine. If the animal god likes the wine, he'll turn into the wind and bless everyone. We want the animal god to be happy, so he helps Razor. <laughs> oh, honorary knight! Look what Albedo let me borrow. What did he let you borrow? This bottle is from my dad. Luckily, I managed not to break it on the way here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just for show, though. I have to give it back to them afterwards. Oh, no. Please don't have him break it. I, oh, come on. Please, bro. Just give him something. Just give him something just this once. Mommy said that the animal god can drink a lot of wine. She said if he wanted to, he could drink the whole of Cider Lake in one big gulp. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> so, do you... Think we'd have enough between these and the wine raiser's parents left behind? Oh, you'll be just fine, Clay. Ah, Green Bard. Uh -uh. Everyone, I am greatly honored to be able to be here today. I have been invited by Acting Grandmaster Jean of the Knights of Avonius to perform a piece for everyone. <laughs> Thousand Wind Wine. You know what's funny? Jean already knows that Venti is the Archon. And she has to sit here and pretend as if she as if he's just some random bard. It is some of the finest verse I know. I dedicate it to the wind and to everyone here with us today. Fill up the barrels and store them away. Then wait, wait for a windier day. Wax the bottles, seal them tight. For the south wind that soothes, for the north wind that bites. Damn, he going in. How does this fine wine taste to the tongue? As monster to the ear, like a sweet dream of freedom. And what are the fruits that went into the brew? An explorer's Ooh. courage. Tender and true. Damn! Tender's will, strong as yesteryear. Joining the thousand winds in a song of good cheer. Turning sour into sweet. Bitter notes fade away as we wait. Wait for a windier day. Day? Pray tell, what treasure does this barrel hold? Tis wheat's greatest triumph, the true liquid gold. As it flows from the keg, what sound drifts by? Wind chimes in the valley. Boundless immemorial sky. We raise up our glasses and voices in song as we wait. Wait for the wind to sing along. Where do we turn once the thousand winds take flight? To the tales of the lyre, to the sweet dream of tonight. Damn! Woo! That was fire! Dear friends, let us now open the wines. That was fire! To the Animal Archon. To the Animal Archon. Um... There's no wind. Don't feel sad, Klee. But why didn't he come? If the Animal God didn't come home, is it because he doesn't like the wine we brought for him? <clears throat> I don't think so. <laughs> of course not. You know, Klee, the wind isn't the only form that the Animal Archon can turn into. He can turn into anything. So today, he must have come back looking like something else. Huh? Really? Maybe he turned into a Chumpy Dumpty. <laughs> sure, Chumpy Dumpty it is. Hope you're listening, Animal Archon. Uh, it's... <laughs> Racer, did the Animal Archon bring you a blessing? Yes. I talked a lot with you all, and I learned a lot. Now, I am not afraid. Nice. I think that is a blessing. Don't forget to save me a glass of your wine once it's finished fermenting. Is Bennett old enough to drink wine? We share together, and we remember together. Yay! <laughs> but now I'm getting thirsty. We've all done a lot of talking. Let's go get something to drink, shall we? I heard that the Angel Share is selling a new drink called Fruits of the Festival. Everyone's saying it's delicious. <gasps> I want some! I want some! Aww. Okay, everyone. Let's go get some. Let's go. Mm. <gasps> Aww. <laughs> it's a look at her go. Look at our little Klee go. Don't 
The wind is here. That's okay, need This is such a feels good event. No drinking, Drap. No drinking, bro. Take this, crush it, and place it on the fracture. Listen, Missy. Promise me you'll live on. That's Varka. Okay. I think that's Varka. This and is Kaya. You, you are our only hope. Forgive me. Kaya. That was Kaya's father. Good, very good. That's my boy. I will always be proud of you. And then that was Diluc's dad. Spent on it. Ah, oh, those ready. are his parents. May as well, leave it for our son. Razor. What do you think of that name? Oh, an adventurer's name. Yes. Aww. Razor. Oh. Razor. Come on. Aww. I love this event. Every Monside event is so good. Traveler, Paimon. Barbara! Hey What's up, Barbara? Hey, it's Barbara! Thanks. And happy Vine Lisa Fest to you, too. This festival is one of the most popular ones in Mondstadt. I'm so happy I ran into you guys here. I hope you have a great time. Oh, also, I heard from Bernhard that you're collecting fair brew jellies. Yep, do you have any? I'm just curious. Are you helping out with the Knights of Favonius charity event? We sure are. Everybody's got to do their part, right? Yep. The stall isn't up and running yet. We're busy raising funds so they can open for business. There's sure to be a bunch of other problems to deal with once it's open, but whatever comes up, we'll deal with it. Wonderful. <laughs> They're lucky to have you. Now that you've joined the team, I just know it'll be a huge success. Thank you for the encouragement. That's Monstat's cheerleader right there. I helped out a small charity sale for the Knights once too. Although, my only contribution was standing out front and singing. <laughs> And I also met the bard, Venti, there. Oh. He even persuaded me to perform an impromptu song with him. The music he plays is quite refined and elegant. At first, I didn't want to sing too loudly in case I ruined the style he was going for. Wait, doesn't she already know that Venti is the animal archon? She was literally with us during the first Golden Apple Archipelago quest. But he sang a harmony to guide me in. And before long, we were sounding great. In the end, the audience loved it, and we sold a lot at the event. Nice. So Barbara's worked with the Tone Deaf Bard before? Uh. Yeah. Too bad we couldn't fit it into the schedule this year. The Church of Favonius wants to hold a sung poetry event somewhere with a nice view during the festival, which means I have to go to rehearsal. Go do what you gotta do, it's alright. Yep, sounds like we've each got our own important work to do. Let's give it all! Oh, thank you both. Well, maybe I can't stay here and sing, but I still want to do a little something to contribute. I can... um... I can help promote your stall. Oh. Hmm. Should I make some big posters? Or maybe some flyers to hand out? I'll have to pick a memorable slogan, too. And maybe it'll seem more sincere if I sign them. Oh, people will definitely line up for that. <laughs> then again... Maybe telling people in person would be more effective. Wow. With Barbara helping out on the marketing side, this charity event will get loads more attention. But it sounds like a lot of effort. It 
It's fine, really. It won't take me too long. Oh, now I feel a little embarrassed. <laughs> it's alright. Let me think about it a little more and talk to some other people about their marketing experience. Traveler, Paimon, I'll see you later. Bye bye. And, um, the Knights and the Church of Favonius are really proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, Barbara. Look at the cute little Paimon. Oh, that's so cute. We are open for business. Traveler, Paimon. Oh, Mona official. What's up? Mona official. You came to check out the market, huh? Hmm. One was wise to follow one's intuition and ask Lady Magistus to join the princessin on a tour of this folk festival. Uh-huh. Extraordinary events may yet unfold, even on this unexceptional autumn day. Splendid. Most splendid. Uh-huh. Main Fräulein is battling hard to suppress the euphoria in her voice. <laughs> has put her in the most wonderful mood. <laughs> Exposed her ass. Your gratuitous embellishments. <laughs> Maybe you should leave me to do the explaining. Not long ago, Her Highness had a very nice dream and took it as a sign that something good was about to happen. Naturally, Her Highness's first thought was to come to me for some astrological guidance on the matter. She also noticed that the Vine Lace Fest was in full flow and asked if I was interested in checking it out with her. Mm -hmm. I, of course, agreed. I can take advantage of the festival period discounts to purchase some bulk supplies for my present column writing spree. I must admit, without Her Highness's reminder, the Vine Lace Fest may well have completely passed me by. Lady Magistus, might Her Highness remind you that the dream of which you speak occurred no less than nine days ago? <laughs> and that only after awaiting Lady Magistus's return letter, in vain for all this time did one have no recourse but to rap most furiously upon the door to thy abode. Damn, she left you undelivered. <laughs> it's been nine days already? Nine days! Where did the time go? She just like me. <laughs> In light of the great importance this manuscript has to you, Lady Magistus, one shall not hold thy inattentiveness to the passage of time against thee. But I would implore you, Lady Magistus, to be attentive at least to the nigh overflowing mailbox outside your door. Uh there appear to be many others whose letters go unanswered. Damn, what are y'all doing? <clears throat> Anyway, mm. time is of the essence. I have a lot of bulk buying to do. Speaking of which, it's quite a surprise to see you running your own shop. And a snack shop at that. The most important kind. Uh-huh. Oh, actually, we're just helping someone else out. <laughs> Feel free to browse around. Is there anything you'd like to purchase? Let me think. Uh, can you recommend anything that uh, goes well with a drink? Mm-hmm. So we got cheese. They go well with wine. I know Mona's probably legal enough for that. Uh, official, I don't know about you. You can go drink, I don't know, some cranberry juice or some shit. Sure can. If you got the hangries, then look no further. Just that time and check the menu. Uh, wait a sec. Goes well with a drink. <laughs> Where's my drink? What drink? Uh-oh. Is the writing going that badly? You know drinking isn't gonna solve your problems, right? <laughs> As it happens, Main Fräulein has been visiting Mona quite frequently as of late. It uh. is possible that Lady Magistus is feeling the pressure from the constant interruptions. <laughs> Restrain yourself, your highness. No, no, it's nothing like that. This has nothing to do with drinking or with Fischl's visit. You all need to calm down. Recently, her highness invited me to try her signature cold cut platter. Uh, sorry, I mean, die heilige Sinfonie. Uh-huh. It had such a unique taste and every bite was so sumptuous. Before I realized it, I had finished the entire plate. Damn, so you <laughs> ate everything in front of her? Wow. 
Well, an empty plate is the highest compliment you can give to the chef. The halagazinfoni is an excellent dish. It's filling, full of energy, and has a long shelf life. And, if I'm not mistaken, it's often paired with alcohol, yes? Yeah. It is, in almost every respect, a far superior dish to the so-called satisfying salad. The sole exception being the steep price. <laughs> Fortunately, however, the Vinalesa Fest is upon us. A festival during which not only are wine sold at discounted prices, but also wine-related food products. This opportunity is a godsend. I cannot let it slip by. This is like when poor people find out there's going to be a discount at the local shop. Rejoice, Lady Magistus. That dish was but a spontaneous creation, hastily made in a moment of need while on a royal excursion. You shall have many opportunities to enjoy far finer culinary delights than this. Main Fräulein means to say that this dish represents a mere fraction of her full capabilities. Uh -huh. But of course, far be it for me to suggest that the true breadth of Her Highness's culinary brilliance can be displayed in a single dish. So you're trying to say that Fischl is a good cook? Mm. However, I cannot expect the Sovereign to serve her subject. Uh, what I mean is, <laughs> I can't keep letting you cook for me when you're a guest in my home. At the very least, I should have something more than salad in store for when people come around. With any luck, I'll be able to find mm. something to your taste here. Huh? Mona? Is that really what this is all about? Main Fräulein, might I suggest alternative phrasing that would be more faithful to your style? <laughs> Perhaps... Long had I foreseen this, or thou needst not fret over thy affinity for salad. Uh-huh, write that down, write that down. <clears throat> Most indeed, Lady Magistus. <laughs> I like that she breaks character more often now. You have long since earned the recognition of your princessin. Devote yourself to deciphering the secrets of the starry sky. You need not spend precious hours in search of additional ways to delight me. Don't worry. I won't always be as busy as this. It'll be quite nice to work on some other skills when I have the time. In that case... Allow Favonian goodies to be the solution to your troubles. In addition to our range of ready-to-eat drinking snacks, we also have a wide variety of semi-prep dishes for sale. Why not get a few of each kind? Yeah. Finishing off these ready-to-cook meals at home is easy as pie, takes no time at all, and can help you improve your cooking skills. Then, once you have more time on your hands, you'll be ready to challenge yourself with some trickier dishes. Thank Paimon is good at this. We can even come and help if you want. The Traveler is really good at cooking. It'd be no problem. Problem. Yeah, piece of cake. <laughs> That's a great idea. I'm almost tempted to increase my budget now. Lady Magistus, your princessin awaits your culinary masterpiece with great anticipation. But please keep Paimon's suggestion in mind and allocate your time wisely. <laughs> oh, you just wait. The next time you dine at my home, I'm sure you will be pleasantly surprised. Nice. Over here! For snacks, fresh flowers, and general goods. Folks, grab bargains at Favonian Goodies and Buddies. Hey, I've never seen that animation before. I've never seen Ether do that. Huh? Hey, look, it's Albedo. Where he at? Yo, what's up, dude? Uh, hello there. Looking to buy anything in particular, Albedo? I'm not in dire need of anything right now. I just heard that you were running the Knights of Favonia stall and thought I'd come over. Yep. As it happens, Timaeus and I made some progress in our research recently, so I took the opportunity to bring you a batch of our finished product. Consider it our contribution to the charity effort. Thanks. Aww, so you came all the way here just to help us out? That's so nice of you. Let's take a look here. We've got bottles of... Wait. What is this stuff? <laughs> it's an extra strong sobriety potion that can sober up the intoxicated and alleviate hangovers. Oh, wait, no, that could actually be, uh, that would be amazing for this festival. Also, why are you staring at me like that? <laughs> Jesus, all right, relax, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ma, Albedo is staring into my soul. <gasps> ah, he's gonna grab me through the screen. Please, 
hand them out for free to anyone who needs them. Having some complimentary items will undoubtedly help you attract more customers. Sounds like a super useful invention. It must have taken you ages. Oh. Uh, it must have been a while since I demonstrated my capabilities to you. I most likely wouldn't have had any interest in research like this in the past. But now, I think that it's worthwhile using alchemy to make people's lives easier in small ways like this. Definitely. Well, Paimon assumes so, because Paimon's never been drunk before. But <laughs> plenty of our customers probably have been. <laughs> You'll get your chance, Paimon. It would definitely ruin the mood if someone fell into the lake or tripped over a rock after having one too many glasses of festive cheer. You can't take all this and give nothing in return. Yeah, Albedo. You should take some stacks back with you and share them with Klee. It's on the house. All right, then. Uh, I shan't refuse. I had no idea you two had such keen business sense. Well, I didn't know either, but I don't know. It's a savvy choice of location for selling snacks. There's a festive mood all around, and the division of labor is eminently sensible. If any other Knight of Favonius were running the show, it would be a much more, uh, generic operation. <laughs> wow, getting complimented by Albedo is an amazing feeling. This must be how it feels to drink an extra strong sobriety potion when you wake up with a groggy head. Uh-huh. Anyway, it sounds like you know quite a lot about running a charity sale yourself, Albedo. Well, I provided a dozen or so landscape paintings for a previous charity event, also run by the Knights of Avonius. They must have been worth a fortune. Well, the people buying them certainly thought so. You're literally a famous artist, after all. Some felt that my painting style was a rare one worth investing in, and offered a large sum of money for each work. This, plus the sizable profits made from auctioning some of my still-life paintings, seemed to give Alice an idea. Ah, so Alice is your manager, huh? She used her personal connections to apply for some sort of certification for my artwork. I believe they call it copyright? Yeah. I... Later, many artists began to imitate my landscape paintings, and they became a common sight throughout Mondstadt. Uh-huh, so it all came from you. According to the rules of the copyright that Alice applied for, the artists need to pay me a portion of their revenue for each landscape painting of this style that they sell. Yeah. Wealth was never one of my goals. I don't care where the money goes, so... I entrusted it to the Knights of Favonius and let them manage it. Damn, <laughs> he making so much money, he was like, all right, yeah, y'all can take it. I don't, I don't need that shit. <laughs> I suppose it would be fitting to use it to pay for the destruction that Alice has created. <laughs> That's true. But from what I hear, they use it all on charitable initiatives, which is also a noble cause. So you've never participated in a charity sale. You've done more for charity than any of us. You never cease to amaze, Albedo. Though it was hardly my original intention, I have come to embrace my unexpected philanthropic achievements. Uh-huh. You said light work for me. And I am only too happy to share my expertise with you. However, practice is the most essential factor. Well then, I will be returning to the workshop. I wish you and the shop all the best. Thanks. Thanks for your contribution, and good luck with your research! Come again when you're free. Bye bye. We did it. That's how you get the crown. Damn. That actually did feel like it required a crown as a reward. <gasps> Amber, you are! Yes. Yes, Amber's here. Uh, found you. Wait, you came here looking for us? Wait, I need it to be, I need it to be daytime. Hold on. Give me a sec. I'm just going to wait until it's daytime because I need to see Amber's bright face. Okay, wait, it's daytime. It's daytime. Of course. Do you have any there idea it how is. popular your charity stall is? Everyone's been talking about it. Favonian goodies and buddies run by the honorary knight and their sidekick, selling all kinds of fantastic treasures and even giving away some wonderful others for free. Don't miss out. Paimon's back to being the sidekick? Uh. Mm. Still, Paimon's really happy to hear that people are giving good reviews. It's all thanks to our customers. Anyway, what have you two been up to these days? Did you go off on a trip or something? We haven't seen you around the whole festival. <laughs> That's because we're still working. Oh. Huh? 
You still have to work? Oh yeah, that's right. I mean, they're both a part of the night, so they still have to work. Technically, Amber and I are on a vacation schedule. So yeah, holiday shift. There are more merchant caravans than usual traveling the route between Dormanport and Mondstadt City during the festival. Extra traffic means extra security is required. Uh-huh. Because of monsters and bandits and stuff? Yes. The Reconnaissance Company is tasked with patrolling this route during the festive period, as well as traveling with the caravans to ensure essential goods are delivered without incident. We have to investigate suspicious locations to eliminate any emerging threats. Uh-huh. <sighs> that seems like a lot of work. Sounds like you'll be working non-stop around the clock right up until the end of the Vine Lisa Fest. That sounds like ass, but you better be getting paid good. Uh of course not. We take shifts. While one team is on duty, another is resting, and a third team is on standby in case of emergencies. These three teams rotate periodically. Okay. Yule is such an experienced captain. She arranged everything this way so that the reconnaissance company can meet the intense demand during the festival, while still giving everyone a chance to take some time off. Gotta say, great organizing, Eula. <laughs> yes, all right, Amber. I did my job like I always do. I really don't see what the fuss is all about. Quite the glowing review, Outrider. <laughs> That's not the half of it. When you've got the time, I should tell you the story of when Eula got made captain. Now that's a good one. <clears throat> anyway, we didn't come here just to chit-chat. I'll let Eula do the honors. Okay. I need 40 portions of Night Special Northern Smoked Chicken, and 40 of Favonia's favorite pile up Damn, that's a lot of food. That's such a huge order! What's the occasion? Y'all couldn't have put in this order for, uh, for like three hours beforehand? quite as glamorous as all that. Captain Eula wants some supplies to reward her team members with. Correct. Scouts use up an enormous amount of energy in a single day. Each meal, they eat enough to feed... Hmm... Four to five normal people. Plus, a long-standing member has recently returned to our ranks after a long absence. I thought it would be fitting to celebrate the occasion. Okay. Of all the things I could have bought, I thought it would be best to have the money go to you. That way, I can support a charitable cause while I'm at it. Nice. Paimon agrees. You made the right decision, Eula. It's what we business owners call a win-win situation. Thank you for your generous contribution. Also, about this long-standing member you mentioned. Is it the guy we met recently? Mika, the frontline land surveyor. He was a vital member of our team before the Grandmaster borrowed him for the expedition. Yeah, that's the one. Paimon never would have thought that shy little guy was such a strong knight. Mika's not afraid of you guys. That was his way of showing respect to you. Although, admittedly, it is kind of a roundabout way of doing it. Yeah, very roundabout. He thinks all mighty people have unique personalities and prefers to understand what makes them tick and the way they think before properly interacting with them. What? <laughs> he wants to study us? He says it makes it easier to communicate that way. He was the same way toward me and Amber at first. As we gradually got to know each other, he started acting more naturally. Interesting. Sounds like Mika's the one with the unique personality. I'm sure we'll get along just fine. Mm-hmm. It'll just take a little time, that's all. You are a high-profile figure within the Knights of Favonius. As his commanding officer, I have a duty to make sure no misunderstandings arise between you. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's all right, Eula. We get it. You're just looking after him. Yeah. Wait, Eula, did you just pay for my portion too? I was supposed to pay for mine separately. I'm not an official member of the reconnaissance company. <sighs> if you want to get official about it, then fine. It's officially my treat. <laughs> there, now stop worrying. Ah, <laughs> oh, they're gone. Thanks, no, you come back. Easy. Ever come back, Eula, no.